Specialist here at Badgerland. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Um, just want to address a few things to get started. Um, again, we are going to be recording tonight as long as everyone's okay. I didn't see anything in the chat log, so I'm going to let my co-host know she can go ahead and start the recording. Perfect. Thank you. So, I did not come alone tonight. Uh, I did bring my <laughs> helpers with me tonight. Um, so you'll be with me tonight. I am going to be the co-leader, excuse me, one of the co-leaders. Um, but with me, I have Sarah. Sarah Rogers is my co-leader. She will also be acting as narrator tonight. So while I'm gonna be your troop leader taking you through this meeting, Sarah is going to jump in with some helpful tips and tricks to uh, help you be able to run your first meetings. So, um, I do also have some other Badgerland staff members with me tonight that are helping out. Um, so they are going to be my plants. <laughs> they're going to be pretending to be girls tonight. So. Uh, you know, when they're jumping in here to show you all of their cool things on camera, um, it's not just because they're super excited, uh, <laughs> they're doing it for a reason. Um, so with me tonight that are helping out, I have Annie. Annie is a recruitment specialist here at Badgeland. I also have Joelle with me. <laughs> Joelle's going to be having lots of fun with us tonight. <laughs> and then we have Teresa. She's waving as well. Teresa was Princess P that I asked to rename because this is one of the helpful hints for you as well when you're having your meetings. Um, you want the girls to have their names on the camera so you can see who they are, right? So that those are my plans with me tonight. Thank you for, <laughs> for joining in. Um, go through our agenda here today. So you all saw my arrival activity. I hope you uh, drew some great pictures of what you see outside. Maybe some birds, maybe some trees, uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll be doing our opening here in a little bit. Uh, we'll promise an icebreaker. Um, we'll talk about some Zoom meeting etiquette. And then our activity tonight, I know excited for. We are going to be making sock puppets from Vagilant Stay at Home Patch Project. And then we'll be closing with our virtual friendship circle. Um, I do want to just kind of uh, address that we did take this um, idea for this activity from obviously the Vagilant Stay at Home Patch Program. We'll show you a little bit later where you can find the information if you haven't already on what steps uh, the girls can take to complete that, uh, that patch. The activity we're doing tonight does have a video that goes along with it that's linked on the Badgerland website. Um, you can certainly use that video if you'd like. I was tailoring this meeting to more of a daisy level uh, and it's, the video was a little too in-depth for daisies. So we just adjusted. So, but it is out there if you're interested. Um, and I think at that... And I'm gonna jump in before we switch as the narrator, the, the tip trickster, I like to, yes. to name myself too. Just to point out again, uh, Sarah Rogers, Director of Leadership Development, uh, but Tabitha really worked hard to engage people as they came in to the Zoom meeting. We encourage you to do that with your girls. So as you see girls, you know, joining to unmute them. Welcome. Hi, how are you doing? How's your day been? Have a little, you know, little conversation. Say, okay, get yourself settled. Do the welcome activity. And I'm going to mute you and we're going to talk some more. But it's just really nice so that the girls all know you're engaged. You see them. You're making that connection right away. And so that's something that we find is really important. And the girls just get that immediate buy-in, that medium, immediate sense of self. It's like if you would welcome them as they walk in the building to your troop meeting. So that is something just to make sure that's still happening in this virtual, virtual world. Awesome. So is everyone ready to get started? All right. Thumbs up if you're ready. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So we are going to move on to the Girl Scout Promise. So if you will please join me. 
on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. So lots of fingers up there and doing the Girl Scout three. Perfect. Girl Scout sign. Um, so for a nice icebreaker activity today, I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen for a moment here so we can see more of your, your faces. All right. So I want to do a nice little icebreaker activity here for everyone. Your icebreaker tonight is, what is the first thing you want to do when our troop can actually meet again? What's the first thing you want to do when our troop can meet? Oh, thank you, Teresa. This is fun, yes. Ooh, Sarah, let me unmute you. I saw you first. first. Well, you know, I miss you girls so much. The first thing I want to do is just get everybody together to do a nice friendship circle. I can't wait to do that with all of you when we get our troop back together. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. I agree. Anybody else? Anyone? Raise your hands if you want to you go next. Let's see. Who do I see? Oh. Oh, I see Sarah Rosenstein. Sarah, how about you? Let me see if we can unmute you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, my daisies are finishing a journey, and they our last meeting that was canceled after the stay at home was the last step of that journey, so I'm really excited. They all completed it on their own for us to get together and share what each of the girls did because they, they worked really hard on the journey. So I'm excited about that. Love it. All right, Karen, I see your hand up. All right, Karen, you're unmuted. Well, I jumped ahead. I had mine this afternoon. So what we talked about, what we wanted to do was be able to talk about our summer activities, which we hope oh. we can do. Yeah. Karen, I'm really excited about my summer activities too. I hope I can share it with all my friends. No. Annie, that's great. It was, it, it was Karen's turn to talk, but that was really nice. Thank I'm you done. for your input. All right, anybody else? One more? Oh, Crystal, I'm gonna unmute you, Crystal. All right, what are you excited to do once our troop can meet again? Once our troop can meet again, I am excited to just find some kind of activity or outing that we can do as a troop to celebrate our phenomenal cookie season. Um, we um, sold way beyond our goals and expectations this year, and the girls deserve to celebrate their hard accomplishments. Absolutely, that's amazing. I love hearing these. Um, all right, anybody else? Last one. Oh, Charlene, You're unmuted. Uh, I want to plan the events that we didn't get to this year when we got stopped in the middle of everything. So uh, <laughs> I want to take them uh, uh, roller skating and bowling yet. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Good deal. All right. So that was, that was a very good way to open up. Tell about what we're super excited about. Yeah, and I'll jump in here too as uh, the narrator too. Um, some of the things that we also suggest um, while we did the promise, as you saw, Tabitha had all of us muted um, so that we could hear her. Um, because if to have 20 voices saying it, the sound effects gets really hard and girls and adults get lost in the words. It also helps to have the words up on the screen. So girls, you know, depending on their reading level, of course, the little bitties, you know, to a little older, it kind of differentiates, but that is, that is helpful too. And what's really nice, um, Tabitha, this was our first troop meeting virtually. So Tabitha is the leader, ran it to kind of show how it is, but moving forward, that's a great place for you to keep the tradition of the caper chart, which is basically a Girl Scout chore chart and the Girl Scout promise could be one of them that you utilize and so then that person would be who would be unmuted 
at that time. And so they, their voice would be the one everybody heard. And I don't know about you, but I know a lot of, uh, that's like a coveted spot <laughs> within a troupe is, is to do the promise, to do the ending in the beginning, right? And so that's just something too that you can, you know, keep some of your um, traditions that you did at your physical troupe meetings here in the virtual world as well. Um, just a couple other tips uh, during icebreakers. We didn't get to everybody, of course, and, but in your troupe, it really is important that you do get to everybody. And so make sure girls are engaged. Um, we do have people on the line right now that aren't showing their video cameras. That's perfectly fine. And that might be because of technology, their desire, whatever that might be. And girls in the troop probably are the same as us. And so just to acknowledge everyone, and it helps me to go through my visual cues to kind of where I can see on the screen the order of the faces to go through and call on each girl individually. Um, as we were doing as Tabitha call, you know, raise your hand, I'll call on you. And then we saw Annie didn't quite listen. Annie unmuted herself, popped in there, kind of talked over Karen as Karen was sharing hers. Again, you know, and Tabitha to redirect Annie. Great idea, Annie. But, you know, we really want to hear in her chance. So keep yourself muted. And if you want to unmute yourself, raise your hand sort of thing too. It also helps with background noise to keep us all sort of focused in on there. So those are my tips for that section. Oh, Tabitha, you want to unmute yourself. <laughs> there we go. See, this is what happens. Well, you have a co-leader. <laughs> this is why you have a co-leader, everyone. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk through some Zoom meeting etiquette. Sarah already uh, kind of talked about the first one here. Everyone is muted. Um, if you would like to be unmuted, you can raise your hand uh, and I can go around and unmute you like I did before. Or you can chat in the, put something in the chat log if you maybe aren't sharing your camera. Um, and that way I know you have a question. Um, if you want to be unmuted or if you just want um, to put your question there, that's fine. We also... <laughs> Yes, Teresa wants to, you, I love seeing everyone too, Teresa. So let's keep in mind that the chat log, <laughs> the chat log should be for questions. If you have questions for myself or, or Miss Sarah, our co-leader, you use the chat log for that, okay? But let's, let's keep the excitement of seeing each other just for now. We'll, we'll give some time at the end, you know, to, to, talk about what we've been doing, but uh, right now, oh, Joelle, are, are, that's a really great hat. Oh my gosh, you have a book to go with your hat? I love it. That's, that's great. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so back to our topics, right? Okay, so when someone is talking, it's important that you give them your full attention. I know you got a bunch of stuff going on around you. Your brothers and sisters are running around. Mom and dad are doing stuff. Joelle, that's great. That's a really nice lotion. Um, Joelle, I, I know you're super excited and we'll have time maybe at the end to go through that. But right now, just let's give our <laughs> attention to, to me and Miss Sarah because we're the ones talking, okay? I would love to see all of your stuff just a little bit later. Okay. Wonderful. Let me, I'll jump in here too. So who found uh, Joelle distracting made with her stuff showing? What about um, Teresa that is chatting in the chat mm -hmm. box? I don't know if all of you can see the bubbles coming up of the chat box. Just kind of chatty Kathy in the, in the chat box and how Tabitha wanting to be kind right? Like all of us are, tries to acknowledge the girls. Oh, Joelle, I love, I love your hat and your book. Oh, maybe later, right? Like these are all things that we would do in person at our troop meetings. We know girls, Miss Sarah, Miss Sarah, let me tell you about my new puppy, right? As you're trying to talk about an activity or dive into a journey, right? So realize those are going to happen virtually as well. So what, like Tabitha was kind of setting the ground rules. And this is also something we recommend, you know, setting out to the parents beforehand. Hey, parents, remind your girls 
find a, a place that's not doesn't have distractions that they put away their toys you know try to keep the pets away and really um focus in on on the meeting so giving the parents so the parents can you know support you there uh the other part too is you have control a control over most of this you're not gonna be able to control joelle with her showing things in the camera but in the chat log you are able to set up that people can only communicate with you or your co-host and so that is something where you can disengage that teresa can get in there and type stuff to everybody so just know that you have that control as the host of a Zoom meeting. And there, I can help you with instructions when we're done to kind of go through those logistics, but just familiarizing yourself with the platform and what you can control and turn on and turn off is gonna help you with those sort of distractions that are gonna pop up during, during the entire meeting. <laughs> That's awesome, Sarah. This is also why we recommend that you have two people with you as well. Um, you have your co-leader on uh, along with you in this meeting so that there's two of you that can kind of manage the chaos, right? Just like you do in in-person meetings, a virtual meeting is, yes, you're just in your own separate homes, but you're still all together and they still outnumber you. <laughs> so <laughs> have back up with you, <laughs> right? All right, so thank you very much, co-leader Sarah. So is everyone ready to get uh, working on our projects. I know I'm very excited for sock puppets. So does everyone have their supplies with them for their sock puppets tonight? You have some, some socks. Maybe mm, some old socks here. I brought a sock with pineapples on it. I'm really excited to use it. And I brought some string to make some hair and Annie, that's amazing. I love that you shared that. Thank you. I love your pineapple socks. <laughs> Yes. Anybody else that help maybe show up, show your supply, your socks? Everyone got your socks? Yes. That's great. I love, I love seeing all your socks. That's great. Um, let's see. So we talked about this is the uh, Badgerland State Home Patch Program. Uh, Thumbs up if you've taken a look at the different activities out there on that patch program. See quite a few, okay. So I highly, highly recommend taking them. You know, this is just our first one. Our first activity from there is to make a sock puppet and to do a puppet show with it. Oh, I see, we have a chat down here from Teresa, yes. You can still use your sock even if it has a hole in it, Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so these activities, there's lots of them that you can do. Did anyone see an activity out there that maybe they're, they want to try on their own later on? Raise your hand if you do. Oh, Charlene, I'm going to unmute you. Which activity did you want to try? From what the, from the videos I've watched? Yep. I suppose I can't even think of one right off the bat, but there's been a lot of them. That's awesome. I love it. Anybody else? <laughs> I love this. All right. So what I would like to do then is if everyone takes their, <laughs> everyone takes their socks and takes their uh, items that they have. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice cup there. Thank you, Joelle. I, it's very nice. Okay, everyone has your so sock puppet ready. Okay, so you have paper, maybe you have markers, right? Whatever you have, we're going to spend the next uh, five to ten minutes or so, and we're going to make some sock puppets. So, Everyone is uh, is going to be working on their own. Okay, if you you know maybe want to show off your sock puppet, wait till the end, and we'll show everyone together. How does that sound? Thumbs up if you're okay with that. Thumbs down if you want to try something else. Oh, just kidding. We're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna do the sock puppets. Just kidding. All right. <laughs> 
All right, so I know that it's not a lot of direction, but does everyone know what a sock puppet looks like? Okay, uh, I see some heads. Okay, so I'll just give you an example, okay? This, this is one I made earlier today, so I practiced, okay? So, okay. Right, so <laughs> I didn't do anything special to my sock that caused it to not be able to use again. It's just tape and some paper and some yarn, real easy. Just to give you some ideas, right? We got a mouth, we got some eyes. Those are the most important parts, right? <laughs> this one is Betsy. Her name is Betsy. She's got the nice pigtails, right? All right, so. Take the next five, 10 minutes, and I want you to start working on your sock puppets. It's okay if you don't finish. Just start working on your sock puppets, everyone. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna, while people are gathering things, so this is, of course, as an adult, an adult-focused video, if you would like to make sock puppets and work through that, please do so. That was just a fun activity for us to do with you as well, but just some, tips and tricks that Tabitha was going through. Um, again, um, with Teresa chatting everybody, um, she now is going to stop because she's her, her example has been given, but please remember you can turn that option off at any point to stop the chatter. Or maybe this is where you want to open that chatter box to allow people to talk about it. Hey, how are things going? How are you doing? Because some girls will move quicker than others. And so this might be an opportunity where uh, Tabitha could be engaging with them. So this is the way they, she could chat and engage. Um, again, they would still want to raise their hand if they would have a question. Um, but when Tabitha started us out to say, who's got our supplies? I mean, we would hope the girls would have their supplies, but you got to prepare that they don't. Maybe they didn't bring a sock. Okay, that number one is a sock, right? So what if a girl goes, oh, I forgot my sock. Chances are, if you're cutting it, she might not be able to run, get a sock real quick from her guardians, her parents to cut holes in. And that might, she might get frantic and just say, okay, do you have paper by you? Okay, well, let's draw what your plan is. And then when you have time, you'll be able to make this puppet as well as a whole bunch of other ones. And just let's start designing them. So then you're able to engage with girls whether they forgot their supplies, they, they didn't have one that they could use, whatever it might be. So that's an opportunity to, you know, have girls show their supplies, you know, chat in the chat log. If you don't, raise your hand. I can help you through ideas. But that's also where, you know, Tabitha can be maybe working on her sock puppet that she's making, and I can be assisting as a co-leader. Um, it's also good, too, to test your camera angles. So if Tabitha is, in reality, would probably be doing more of, okay, you take your sock and then you, you know, braid some hair or you take a Google eye, you know, she would have instructions that she would want to physically show the girls. So it's always really good to kind of get in and, you know, navigate your camera, you know, do you have to angle it down so people can see your workstation maybe as well as your face. Um, yeah, like Joelle's holding up pencils. So try to like, can you see this girls and have them do that. So just sort of practice those things. So then when you're in the meeting, you got your table kind of set your supplies and girls and girls can can see that um, as well. And, and Tamitha too, she she caught herself because she said thumbs up if you're ready for socks, thumbs down if you have a different idea. Right? She, we never do the thumbs down for, because you'll get 42 different ideas <laughs> with that. And we're not going to be able to do those right now. We're doing sock puppets. So, but that was an example of sometimes, gosh, even more so in virtual. I'm a, I'm a rambler for those. I know many of you, you know I can talk, right? But Tampa's shaking her head. But a virtual, even more so, because I can see myself. So I'm real focused on me, how I'm looking. I just like to talk to myself a lot. And that's going to be your girls as well and you. So just try to make sure that it, we don't get the rambling going that's not engaging our girls. Um, so Tabitha can show you some examples of um, during this activity how she can engage girls, you know, 
question each one of them, maybe ask Joelle to show her progress, and she can kind of talk through um, some of those things. Sometimes it's okay to uh, have music on during activity time too, you know, something to kind of fill it, fill the noise. Um, I will say yes, calling on girls. So is anyone, I, I actually am curious, is anyone working on a, I see a few people actually working. It's okay if you're not. Uh, anyone willing to show some of their puppets? <laughs> Karen, that's great. I love it. This is my second one. <laughs> Let's see, I saw another hand up. <laughs> I love these. All right. Um, it looks I'll like tips that looks like Karen. I'm like, go ahead, Karen. Yes, All Karen. I had was a sock and a marker. So then you just works. wiggle your hands. I mean, if if somebody was didn't have anything, you could come up with go get a paper towel and a marker or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And they would have something that they could do. Yeah. That's exactly right, Karen. And that's one of the things I'm sure you've uh, encountered in some shape or form. Uh, <laughs> meetings with your activities. Uh, sometimes you just don't have the right supplies or your girls don't come prepared. So we always have a backup plan or we always have some way to kind of help them. So like Karen said, all you need is a sock and a marker and you're good, right? I mean, and really, that's all it takes. You might notice as well um, that, you know, girls are getting done at different times. So Karen, your sock took barely any time at all. I see it looks like Teresa's still kind of working on hers up there. You know, that's okay. Maybe, you know, when the girls are done, if you have music playing in the background, maybe encourage them to have a dance party and burn off some of that energy while they're waiting for everybody else. Oh, I see some other socks. Oh, Chris, that's a great one. I love it. I love these. So again, so, you know, calling people out, calling in girls out so you can see their activities. I love that. And yeah, encouraging them, like I said, burn off some of that energy. So if you finish, have a dance party. Let's see your moves. <laughs> Get the wiggles out. Um, and this kind of holds true as well, that if you're going through, and I'm sorry, Sarah, I'm taking some of your, your job here, but if you notice throughout, um, you know, maybe you're reading a story to the girls, or maybe you're talking through something, and you notice that they're having a real hard time focusing, it's okay to pause the activity and do a wiggle break, right? Just do, just tell them, get all the wiggles out, just shake it off. Do some jumping jacks, whatever it is, just to get out that energy, and then you can come back and focus. I say this with my sock puppet the entire time. Uh, <laughs> but work through your activities, kind of watch your girls, just like you would in a normal troop meeting. Watch to see what their, their cues are. Are they getting antsy? Are they having fun? Do you need to move on to the next thing? Kind of keep watching as they go. Yep, and that, that holds true, Tamitha said, because some are, as we know, get done really quick. And some, if it's an art project, they are full in for hours if you would let them just to get it just how they want it. And that is great, right? So I think sometimes too is, a, is the reminding that when you have a little this downtime, when people are working to say, we have five minutes, but don't feel rushed. There is going to be part of this that you're probably going to do after our meeting. That's great. Or if you get done with one, maybe you want to try another one. Please keep going. But just to sort of set the parameters so girls aren't really focused in on the time frame. Um, of course, we would not give them um, the activities for 10 minutes agenda because to some girls that either sounds really long or really short to do uh, activity. And so that is where we can say, don't worry, if you don't finish now, you can take it, your home. You don't even have to take it home, your home, you can finish it there. So that's the part too, just to kind of connect with the girls and engage them, you know, as they go, I see, you know, calling them, oh, I see Chris is still working on hers. Great job, Chris. Teresa looks like she's wrapped up. Hers is taking a nap. Gosh, must have been really tired. What did you do, Teresa, today that tired out your sock puppet? And so you can kind of have those sort of engaging Nancy showing hers and like have those kind of, you know, they can 
talk to us and so forth too. So just to kind of get them a little engaged, but the music in the background is helpful. So people do have time to focus in and not have talking um, going on behind them. All right, so uh, time of our activity time has uh, is coming to a close here. Um, there is one more part to this this badge, and that is that uh, you need to put on a puppet show, right? So this is something we're not going to do together as a group. You're probably going to do on your own. But I know sometimes in our meetings we use the buddy bucket, right? We use the buddy bucket and we pull out names to see who we're going to be working with. Tonight, I'm going to pull out my buddy bucket and I'm going to pair you up with somebody in the troop and then you can figure out and do a puppet show together with your puppets. And then I want to hear all about it. You can take pictures, maybe mom and dad have, you know, can, can record a little bit of it and put it out on our Facebook group. I just, I want to hear what your, what your sock puppet plays are all about and I, I want to see your awesome sock puppets. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out together at, with your buddy, and you're going to work together on uh, your play, OK? Wonderful. And that, another, another tip from the trickster is to have how Tabitha is taking something that would be a larger project. We're going to do a puppet show all together at our troop meeting. That's not possible virtual. That would be really hard to coordinate. Maybe older girls, but daisies for sure, and brownies, it'd be really hard to coordinate that. So making it into smaller groups. And it depends on your comfort level and your parents. You could make it just an individual, you know, do it for your family. Or you could make it like Tabitha said with the, the buddy bucket, pulling two names to say, oh, we're gonna Annie and Joelle. And you can do this after the troop meeting. Annie and Joelle, I'm gonna connect you and then you can, talk to each other on the phone. You can FaceTime with the way that your family feels is safe for the both of you to connect. And you can work out your own little puppet show plan and then connect with the troop leader. Maybe they write it all out or they, like Tabitha said, they video record a Zoom meeting if that's possible, depending again on the technology that the families have or that it's something that they hold. And when you get to be in person, that's when we get to see all these awesome puppet shows. So just a couple ways to get the girls engaged at different levels of different levels of engagement, depending on how many girls, especially that you have around that. Thank you, everyone. You did a very good job with your sock puppets tonight. I love them. I can't wait to see all that they're going to do. Um, but sadly, we're getting to the end of our meeting time tonight. Um, so we really, really want to do a friendship circle because it's one of our favorite things, right? It's one of my favorite things. Um, but we have to figure out how we can do it when we're not able to, to be together, right? So friendship circles, like one big hug, right? All right. So how does it start? Put our right arm over our left arm, right? And we hold hands. Well, this is kind of like giving yourself a hug. All right, so everyone like this. All right, so what we're gonna do is just wrap your arms around and give yourself a Girl Scout squeeze. Ooh. Thank you everyone for joining. That was our, our nice little friendship circle together. Next time we're in person, we'll actually get to do do it the, the way we're used to. But tonight, that was a nice change. We got a hug from our friends, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, and Tampa, that's really, we were saying earlier, it's really hard to do a friendship circle virtual. I've seen different varieties out there in the world, uh, depending on the age level of your girls. Um, this is another great place for the caper chart. Uh, to come in that somebody, you know, Tabitha ran this first one in the idea of instead of squeezing hands, we're giving ourselves a squeeze. So that's one way to do it. But maybe next time, um, whoever is your, your closer on the caper chart, they want to do something a little different. Um, what we've seen our uh, Youth Leadership Council with Alyssa Zimmerman, one of our staff, and Rachel Grecki, they did a virtual one um, for older girls and how they did it was sort of a 
uh, they passed it along like that. So I would pass it to somebody and I would say their name and they would say, thank you, Sarah. And then they would give it back to somebody. So I would say, you know, hello, Tabitha. And she would put her hand up and go, thank you, Sarah. And then she would go, thank you, Sarah. And then she would go, hello, next person in line, Annie. And then Annie would do the same, thank you, Tabitha. Yep. Yeah, exactly like that. So that's another way too that you can kind of get the same idea of a friendship circle that we're all part of it and that we're all together and everybody gets included in it. So this is the place where your troop gets to be real creative and the girl leading it can can do as she seems fit and in parameters that maybe you have um, set for the troop. Um, so that um, we're going to kind of put is like that sort of a basic virtual meeting, put it at the end. However, um, this meeting is going to continue a little bit with just some other um, tips and tricks. So hopefully you got some ideas of how to keep girls engaged, how to make things easier on your end. Um, Tabitha and I have worked, well, Tab I'll say Tabitha. <laughs> I'm, I'm her wing woman, but Tabitha has been connecting with lots of other leaders out there that have been trying to do things. Um, do virtual meetings. We spoke with one woman who tried a virtual meeting and she was like, it was chaos. Oh my gosh, was it chaos? And I, I got to do things differently or this is really not going to be any fun or, or worth anybody's time. They won't get a sense of Girl Scouting. And so we talked, you know, through some ideas with her and she had some thoughts on her own on how things could uh, be better. And we're all learning. We're all, this is, new for all of us. Um, we even had, I was speaking to one of my colleagues at GSUSA who is, uh, helps lead uh, a troop and her daughter. And she realized that as a troop leader running a troop meeting and having her daughter right here did not work. That it, her girl was so disengaged because the, you know, the leader is just focusing right here and, and trying to do this and it just didn't work. So what she had the next time was her daughter went into a separate room and uh, I, the other adult in the area kind of got her situated. She's a little bit older of a brownie, got her situated. So the leader could be the leader and the daughter could be a girl in the troop. You know, that her face came up here just like everybody else's and she got the same sort of involvement. And so depending on technology of your girls, it, it might not be available for everybody. We realize that, but ideally it'd be really good for girls to be separated from um, their leader if their leader is their parent and so that that's just helpful gives them a, a lot more to do um the other thing too that a couple other tips and tricks as tabitha mentioned it's really good to have your co-leader there to help run all this but also that is ratio many of you hopefully all of you are familiar with that at least two um, unrelated background check registered adults to be at every physical troop meeting the same holds true with a virtual troop meeting. And I'm sure as you could imagine, we're not physically with uh, girls and other adults, but there is a lot of safety concerns with virtual learning as well. I'm, I see a lot of heads, you know, people are like, yep, we understand. And so that's just something to be mindful of too, is to make sure you have those safe adults that girls really feel comfortable with and, and can be engaged. Um, and like myself, I had changed the, my name to say Sarah Rogers Badgeland staff. That's also really good as you as the leader, you know, to put Nancy troop leader, because you might have a new, new family joining you. Your troop might be relatively new where the parents might not really know you or recognize your face. And so for them to pop on and see an adult that says troop leader gives them a little bit of like, you're an adult that's supposed to be here in this space with my child okay, I got it. It makes me feel a little bit safer. So some of those things just really challenge yourself to think about. Um, we do have lots of resources on our um, Girl Scouting at Home page. I think, Tabitha, were you going to pull up that website to yeah. show? Okay. Let me, uh, let yeah, me. So as Tabitha's pulling that up, there's a section at the Girl Scouting at Home about virtual troop meetings. has some great resources, has uh, examples for icebreakers. Also, if it I forgot to check before this, I apologize. Uh, we also are putting up a brand new virtual troop meeting safety activity checkpoint. Safety activity checkpoints are the go-to when you're gonna do anything from 
virtual troop meetings to horseback riding. It gives you the exact things to be mindful of, to make sure you take into account for the safety of girls and adults in a really easy format. And so they have just built a new one with the virtual troop meeting and just really enhanced it. And it has all these sort of examples of, as I was mentioning about ratio. Yeah, so Tabitha has the Girl Scouts at Home page. And if you scroll down, there is a gray box that says virtual troop meetings. And if you click that green arrow, it toggles open and it doesn't look like the safety activity checkpoints is there yet, but it will be soon. But it has lots of how to host them, um, a technology guide, just other tips and tricks that, you know, some of what you heard tonight will be there um, and just other things as well. So please, please make sure you're looking at that. And if you would have any questions at all, myself, Tabitha, um, our customer care team, you know, our physical brick and mortar buildings aren't, aren't open, but we, we are not closed. Our customer care team that, you know, answers our 1-800 number and answers our info at email, they're there and answering any, any questions you might have. So um, please know that we are there and we are wanting to help you. Um, oh, a couple questions. So um, Charlene had mentioned, and Charlene, I'll give you in a minute, we'll unmute you, that Charlene saw another way to do the friendship squeeze. So hold that thought, Charlene. Um, and from Cindy, it's how do you share a screen? Cindy, that's a really great question. And so what Tamitha did was when you are the host of a Zoom meeting, at the very bottom, typically it's the very bottom of your screen, there'll be a green button that says share your screen. And if, and you don't have that now because I have um, not allowed, I set it up to not allow other people besides hosts to share their screen. Again, a safety feature because we don't know what a girl would share if she would, and it shares literally whatever's on her screen. So it could be documents her parents had open recently. We don't want to go, even go into that, but as a host or a co-host, you are able to share your screen. So there's a little green box that will pop up as that option. And you can share your screen and pick, you know, if you have multiple monitors or documents up, it'll help you um, do that. And then your, your screen kind of goes half of what you're looking at and then half of the people that are participating. So um, that is really a good one. The other thing I really wanted to put out there is do your best. This, we have found that um, one of the leaders or people that are coming, are coming out to us is saying that virtual might not work for some girls. There are some girls that are very uncomfortable with it. They don't get engaged. Uh, we had a mom reach out to us that their daughter was just not engaging. It, this sort of learning just was really hard for her. And it kind of made her Girl Scout experience not what either of them wanted it to be. And we said, that's okay. Like, there are other options. So if this virtual does not work for your troop or certain girls in your troop, maybe email does, maybe that's okay with them. Um, or maybe it's, you know, via a Facebook group. And we have to think of technology, you know, meet the families where they're at and meet the girls um, where they're at too, just to see, you know, what's, what's comfortable for them to be able to still um, engage into Girl Scouts too. The other piece Tabitha is uh, showing us is virtual backgrounds, which is another option that you could have if you would desire. And Tabitha, do you want to talk a little bit about what those are? Sure. Um, virtual backgrounds are like, uh, it, it's essentially, it's a green screen right behind you. So it blocks out everything that was behind me and it focuses on, you know, giving you this great picture. And there's, there's a few that are preloaded into Zoom that you can find that, you know, there's like a beach, you know, there's outer space, there's, there's tons of them that you can have fun with. See, Joelle's got her, she's at the beach, I love it. Um, the one thing is, it can be very distracting as well, <laughs> so be aware of that. Um, but you may see girls doing it, and you're like, how did you do that? Uh, it is an option in Zoom. Um, it's in the, the um, once you have the desktop client, so the actual program itself on your computer or your tablet or whatever, it is a feature that's in there. Um, so just be aware. And again, it's not always going to work for you, this virtual format, um, but thank you for trying. 
because it's it's not really for everybody and it's, and, and it's okay you know it's whatever works for your troop so yeah and definitely uh get on with your co-leader whatever platform you're going to use whether it's zoom or, or something else and play around a little bit with your co-leader find you know and you can google anything right like how do i do a virtual background in zoom and it will tell you again tabitha and i happy to walk you through that again it can be a distraction so you might want to set that up ahead of time either to do it or to not do it. Uh, the one thing though that we did find as uh, facilitators that was really great is if you are doing a conversation around, like Tabitha mentioned, space, maybe your virtual background is space because that's what your badge work is on. Um, we had a colleague do one, she was um, discussion, discussing governance and so forth and she had like the Washington Monument and the, the Madison Capitol and you know, Tabitha's got, Brewers there. So, I wish I <laughs> yeah. So if you're doing something around sports, I mean, so there's things you could do as, as the facilitator that would be really fun. You just need to um, just be mindful of that and, and just what you could get because you won't have control over what picture. So if Tabitha throws a picture up that is, oh, I got my... we don't know what, you know, Tabitha, we don't know what she's going to do, but she could put that picture up and cause a major distraction for your for your troop meeting so um just put some parameters i did have a question uh crystal asked just for everybody to have a touch point meeting with the girls so they could interact to each other um do we recommend doing or not doing this and it would not have an agenda initially i and i'll speak to this and i would love to then if other people have thoughts maybe you have done one and you have recommendations, yay or nay. Um, we found uh, one of the women that, that I mentioned before sort of was like, our first true meeting was chaos. She didn't have an agenda. It was uh, more of like, let's connect, let's see each other, let's do that. And she said, because there was no agenda, it that's when it sort of just got lost. Not only like herself, just to try to keep some sort of, um, parameters around the, the time they're spending together. And so even if you have sort of a loose agenda that girls might not know about, it can still keep you organized uh, on what you'd like to get done and maybe how you want to connect with girls. So maybe it's, okay, I'm gonna start with all the girls whose um, first names start with A. Okay, Annie, you get to go first. Annie, why don't you, and then whatever you, want the girls to connect about that would probably be a great way to just kind of um, keep some parameters and then and i tabitha i don't know if you have more that you want to add right now but i was thinking if we want to open it up either via chat or if you want to ask a question offer some advice we would sort of want to open it up we have about six minutes left and so we'd love to help and support any way we can Absolutely. Ooh, I see hands up. <laughs> All right, Tabitha, you call, you call and unmute. I'll give that to you. I saw Karen Tan go up first. So Karen, I'm unmuting you. Okay, the only thing is that I did today with my, a lot of the good things that you did, I was able to incorporate into it. Um, moms were there uh, because I have kindergarten or first graders, it was a daisy. And so I could ask them a question too and know that they were there. So then when we did the friendship circle, I said, you do it with your family. Get your mom and your baby sister and so on and so forth. And that went really well. The other thing is I made it only, well, it was a little less than a half hour. I made it really short. We had about three things. It was our first time, but we had about three things I wanted to talk to them about. And that went really well. And then we talked about at the end, before we did the friendship, what they were going to have ready. And then we're going to meet again in like two weeks and make it short. I think that works better. That's great, Karen. Thanks so much for bringing that up because that's a great point. Um, depending on the age of your girls will depend on their their level of being able yeah. to sit still for this long or, or being able to participate for this long. When you get, especially those little daisies, a lot of them, they don't really understand necessarily what's going on because they're they're from home and they're not, you know, meeting with all their friends. So, and their attention spans already are very small. So, 
shorter meetings are really, really good idea. Like this one, I mean, I, I drug it out a little bit, but obviously you short no. the point, it will make it much easier for the girls to participate and you'll actually get more out of it. All right, and then I saw Charlene's hand up. So Charlene, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay, um, I have lots of questions because <laughs> this isn't what I thought it was. I thought you were gonna show us how to do it because I know nothing about it. And I wanna start doing them with my girls, sure. with my troops. So I need some guidance. So how do I do that? Where do I get that from? Yeah. So when we were on the Badgerland website and I show those virtual resources, the there's the Zoom meeting guide. Um, let me see if I can share. Yeah, I looked at that and that I was lost. Well, maybe okay. I'll I'll jump in too. So I think Charlene, that's a great question, and I think all of us adults are coming um, from different places on our uh, accessibility to this technology. Uh, personally, I've never used Zoom before, before all of this. Uh, my son knew more about it than I did and was, he was on it lickety split for school. And so I had a learning curve myself. But I think this also shows there are adults that come from different places. We have different technology. We have different understanding of the technology. And that's the same as our girls and their families. We have families that the internet could be an issue or uh, uh, they have one laptop for three kids that are trying to do schoolwork. How do we manage that? So Charlene, probably to speak directly to you, either myself or Tabitha to connect with you, just to gauge where you are at personally and where your troops are at, that would be probably the most helpful. Um, and I would say too, for the rest of the group, you're gonna have that with your girls. If you are seeing girls not joining the meeting, not engaging at all, you should reach out to them or, or your co-leader and just say, or to their parent, just to say, how can I help? You know, help me, is it the technology? And there's, there's no judgment. This is just, I really want your daughter to participate. Um, and we too need to know when this is a good space for us as troop leaders to be the driver and when to step back. So I have a colleague that this is not their specialty. They do not like being on camera. You know, they like talking to people, but just like this is really hard and the technology to multitask, to run a troop meeting, look at the chat log, unmute people is, is too much. And so they let me be the driver. They help all the planning. They help with like the behind the scenes. And then I do this. So Charlene, that might be too. And to everybody on the call, if you feel real comfortable, maybe this is the platform you're using and, and you run that part of the meeting. But if not, look to your co-leader, look to other volunteers in your troop to see one of them that, that might be real easy and real comfortable and they can be the one to run the technology. Just another thought. But Charlene, let's let's meet either you connect with Tabitha or we can connect and we'll get you uh, situated for sure with what you have. Okay. Also, I know I've been on, sorry. Yeah. I've been on Zoom quite a bit with my family in Madison, and but they connect me via email, and I just click and go on. Otherwise, I've never been on it before. So to actually do one with my troop, I'm lost. I don't know how to start it. I don't know if it costs money. I don't know how long. You know, I wouldn't know how to run all your buttons and bows over there. <laughs> yep, we can definitely get you connected, Charlene, with. There's, like Tabitha said, there's some information on our website, but we can give you definitely the, the start to finish on that. Good. All right, I see Chris. She was raising her hand, so I'm gonna unmute you, Chris. I, I sent a chat. I just wanted to say thank you. I do have to go. My family needs my help with something. So thank Absolutely. you again very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. That's also a good point too. I will use um, Chris as an example. So if girls have to jump off in the middle of the meeting, so sort of what's, what's the expectation? Usually my son's schooling, he just, he doesn't unmute. He just sort of waves like, bye-bye, does this and jumps off so that it's not um, disrupting the troop meeting. 
But you could set it up differently to say, oh, let's make sure, oh, we see Chris had to give off, get off, everybody go, bye, Chris, and, and something fun to engage girls too. But these are the things to sort of think about how you love your uh, troop meeting to work in this virtual world and your co-leader to have those sort of conversations. And uh, Charlene, coming back to your point a little bit as well, um, Zoom is great, but it's not the only one. It's not the only system out there that you can use. There are others maybe that are more user friendly. I know I've heard some people just do chats um, using Facebook Messenger. I mean, that's an option too, if you, especially if you have a Facebook group for your troop. Um, sometimes that might work. Um, there is a video chat option there, so. Yep. Lots of different options and, and again, we can help walk through any of those. And once you try a meeting, if something really did not work or you felt uh, you missed a step or whatever it was, or you had a success, please let us know, A, so we can share, gosh, a success and something that maybe you learned from, because that's all of it. Um, one of the ones that I found I did not do, I did a misstep was, um, I had said people were raising hands. I had like three hands raised. I said, okay, um, I'm going to call on Annie, but I see you, Joelle, and I, I see you, Linda. So, Joelle, I'll get you, and then Linda. And then I forgot the order, right? And then I, so then I went to Linda. Joelle was real upset because I skipped her because she remembered she was after Annie. And so what I do is I always have my pad of paper here, and I will real, and I don't have to make it, you know, visual, but I just write down like, even if it's just A, J L. Okay, so Annie. Okay, now Joelle. Okay, because then again, it helps you be organized, and the girls feel real special that you remembered it was their turn. Because they will remember. They will definitely remember because they are only focused on them, right? And you're focusing on the 20 faces you have in front of you on the screen. And so, just any always have that piece of paper because then you also remember. Oh, okay. Annie. Annie said this, and I should follow up because I told her I would I'm jot it down real quick so you can just keep yourself organized or your co-leader is the note taker and they help you say oh Tabitha actually it was Joelle's turn after Annie and again you have you have that support um because this is a lot like Charlene said this is a lot to set up run you're organizing a troop meeting and you're setting it up virtually and trying to keep this all connected in a very challenging time so just try it. We will help you walk you through it from start to finish if need be. If you want more than what you got tonight, let us know. You know chat in the chat log even too, and you can set it, the little tip and trick. If you go in the chat log um, where it says at the very bottom, you can type your message and it has the two as a little drop down button. Right now it says to everyone. So your message is going to everybody. You can toggle that and just message me, just message Tabitha. So if it's something private that you would want us to see, like, I am super lost, what are you talking about? And you don't want everybody to know, I mean, it's a safe space, but um, you can do that as well. So again, we are here for you and, and, and really truly want to support you in this new adventure you are doing for the girls. <laughs> also, I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you for taking this step to A, learn how to do these meetings and be to actually be willing to do these. I mean, I am sure that you have a million and one things on your plate, just like all the rest of us. Life is kind of crazy right now. And to know that your girls need that Girl Scout presence in their life and to know that you can still provide that. Thank you so much for doing that because really that is just amazing that you're taking this time to learn and, and get comfortable with this so you can help your girls. So thank you. Yep, so now I'll say if there's any last minute questions or support we can give, again, this is, we are always around, please, not your one chance, but <laughs> anything else that people dying to know that we can help with um, or support you in any way, let us know, otherwise, Tabitha, we can, we can do one more friendship squeeze maybe. One, for, one more friendship squeeze just for the road. Okay. Right over left. Right over left. Right over left. And then nice and tight squeeze. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We'll unmute you now.
Yeah. <laughs> you talk, you Thank talk. you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Good luck. Call us. Thanks. Call us. We're here. <laughs>